Wait, wait. You're singing a white line song. <laughs> what do you want? Woke, I never had a chance to love. Woke. I never had a chance. Wake. No, it's wake. Wake. Is this your new thing now? Do like a song? Wake. Before we, you used to talk about cereal. I never honey. had a chance to give you a scripture. I don't know. I just was doing something different. Today is not a, a, a karaoke. A song? This, no, it's we're a Bible study. We are a Bible study. We're going to be in Luke eleven twenty eight. We're talking kind of about the validity of the word from your epic, amazing teaching this week, but the difference that the word of God can make in your life. I encourage you to stay tuned. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where do we wake up? I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. Good to have you with us today. If you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. We like to read that on Wednesdays. And uh, yeah, put just what, what do they do if they're a new subscriber? I don't know. What do they do? Just put their name down. No, put where they're from. <laughs> or if you're a new subscriber, what you could do is put where you're from. In the oh, that's where he made that comment because we kept saying that over and over you again. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you want to get the text daily. Uh, go to wakeuptv.tv and we will send you a text. Then you just go, boop. Yeah. And We've been talking about the reliability of the Word of God and that the, the Word of God's reliability is under attack again. And uh, yeah, I remember this, uh, this, this thing that a- atheists would say about the Pool of Siloam. Okay. It would really point out the Pool of Siloam is mentioned in the Bible. It's one of Jesus' miracles. It's mentioned in Hezekiah, but it's not where it's supposed to be. And archaeologists have dug, dug around. They didn't find it. There is no Pool of Siloam. How do you, you know, how would you as a Christian say that the Word of God is true when uh, obviously it's not? That's just a nice story. It's just, you know, these are legends. These are myths about right. Jesus. And they're nice stories, but it's not truth. And then in 2004, they found the Pool of Siloam. <laughs> Exactly where we're supposed to be, just a little deeper. And uh, it's just funny how time again, you, you hear of these kinds of things happening, but what you don't hear is the, the critics suddenly going, oh, well, we were wrong. I yeah, guess they didn't the, get on there. Yeah, I no, guess there is a God. My bad. Yeah, no one gets online and goes, hey, guys, real quick, I just made a big mistake. They just try and find the next thing to go after. You and know? they've been going through it forever. You yeah. even went back into the 1800s. Mm-hmm. They were still, they were challenging the validity of the Word of God back then. And God's like, well, here's the Dead Sea Scrolls. Enjoy. Yeah, and the Dead Sea Scrolls and just wiped out every argument against the, the validity of the The fact that the, the prophecy Testament. thing, and I, what you mentioned in your sermon about that, that they prophesied three, four hundred years before there was even crucifixion about the crucifixion of Jesus. Yeah, they didn't yeah. even invent it they yet. They pierced my hands and my feet. They weren't doing anything like that. And I don't know, maybe you think like the, the Romans are sitting around and they're going, hey, this is a good idea. This hands we should start doing hands. What, what would we nail them to? <laughs> well, right here, it says it all. <laughs> this looks like it's going to be dangerous. Yeah. Anyway, watch this uh, clip of Jason's teaching. The God who created the heavens and the earth, who's my father, who set planets into orbit and figured out the math to how to make that work, who created gravity, who created atoms that aren't flung apart but somehow are held together by a strong nuclear force, who created every cell in the human body and the cell in plants, the plants that would, would breathe oxygen and we would, and, 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 and would expel oxygen, which we breathe in, and, and we expelled carbon dioxide, which they breathe in, and, and that everything is in perfect balance in a finely tuned universe who thought of everything and holds it all together by his most powerful word. That God has no problem keeping his word accurate and reliable. Yeah, just the idea that we would believe in God and then somehow doubt that he could keep his most precious word right. from, from error. He's up in heaven and he's going, oh, Gabriel, what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> you lost oh, it? Oh, they messed it up. Oh, dang it, what do we do? Yeah, and I, and I know that the attacks are coming. I know that, that the misinformation trolls are going right. to come after me. Right. I'm already expecting that my sermon's going to be littered with comments of people claiming to be people that are not. Yeah. And saying things that aren't true. That's good. That's good press. Um, if I show up on the radar. Right. Um, I hope he does. That's... Because because I'm tapping something that makes atheists and they get very, very angry. Very angry. God's up in heaven going, no, 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 I said, thou shalt not commit foldery. Yeah. No folding. Yeah, but anytime you, you, you start to get truth, how quick are the misinformation people out there to try and... Wikipedia said. Yeah, Wikipedia is always right. And then they have to go in and change it every time Wikipedia that is always changing because, because it's, it's, it, anyone can type anything they want in Wikipedia. You know, this, is a, this is a neat thing. You can't even come out with an app that doesn't have to have 700 updates. How many times has Windows been updated? Oh, yeah. My iPhone is updated on the hour, I think, like every time it's like, hey, would you like to update it? 
And I'm like, no. And then it goes, okay, I need your code. And I go, well, I, I said, no, why would you want my code right now? What are you, why are you bugging? Apple bugs me sometimes. I love them, but he does. So I have this thing on my computer, right? When I'm in it and it goes, oh, you want your password? We can fill it in for you. And I go, yes. And then it goes, hey, I need your computer password. And I go, well, you just didn't save me any time at all. <laughs> I still have to enter a password. I like when I get when you grab your phone and, and it, sometimes it looks at your face and it goes, yeah, that's your face, but I need your code anyway. <laughs> Mine does that too. Well, who do you think? Like, do you think somebody's got the mask thing like from Mission Impossible and like they've, they've impersonated my face perfectly and like, what? why? Why do you still need my... Pass it's code. always at the most inconvenient time in the car. And I'm, a passcode, I'm trying, I have, see, I have a little thumb. It's not a great thumb. It's it's great for its size, and I can't get the the numbers on the phone. Anyway, the word of God doesn't. The, my point was this: is the word of God. God doesn't go. All right, guys. Hey, we got to do update two thousand and thirty-three. Oh um, yeah, we found out God. the Earth's round. We got to change a couple of scriptures. That was a great point. We're gonna there. we're gonna fiddle with that a little bit. Or yeah, we found out the Earth's expand. The universe is expanding, so we need to change some scriptures. No, there's no updates. No updates. Eat the animal. What you can eat animals and can't eat animals, the what I call the LCLs, the Levitical Cleanliness Laws. Right. Still accurate today. That was crazy. And it, the things that the uh, Proverbs talks about with the heart are things that medical science didn't even know. Yeah. Didn't even know yeah. that the issues of life flow out of the heart. I yeah. saw an article recently in Scientific American uh, that said, uh, thoughts and words have power. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's something God's been talking about for 1500 years. <laughs> it's, Long, like, longer this is great, groundbreaking, groundbreaking stuff here. Uh, so in Luke eleven twenty, we've got our scripture yet. He replied, "Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it." Yeah. So your life is when you follow this. Mm -hmm. So you say, "All right, for our marriage, honey, we're going to follow this." Mm -hmm. Right. With our children, we're going to raise them to this. Mm -hmm. Right. We're going to apply this, not the culture. Do you, do you know that raising kids? changes almost yearly in the world. It's true. Almost yearly it changes. No, I know. Marriage because, advice changes mm -hmm. nearly every year on what your marriage should do. Mm -hmm. And but, every time I, I see the new changes and what they're doing, like with, you know, with, with infants or with babies and what they're recommending you do with whatever the thing is, whether it's sleep and, and wake or whether it's discipline or whether it's with two-year-olds or three-year-olds or whether your marriage, like you say, right. I can always look at it and go, that is not going to be a good answer. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not going to go well for you. Like, don't do what you're reading. Right. Uh, almost all the time, I'm like, you know, we've got to learn how to meditate, and, and but also look to the Word of God. Because here's what the devil does. He just repackages the same lies. So on the surface, it sounds good. People are like, oh my gosh, don't undisciplined child. That's the new way. Don't yeah. discipline them. Yeah. Right? And you don't realize that an undisciplined person is a bad adult. Yes. Right? That has no boundaries, doesn't know how to, well, you know, it's just better just to let kids be creative and do whatever they want and run over the house. You don't want to have any boundaries on them. Yeah. How many people know that a teenager without boundaries is not good for the world. And we know, we know, like letting a child watch too much TV. We all just know in, inherently that that's not a good idea. We right. we know that it's right. built in us. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember when our kids would would get into a like maybe a board game. We'd be you know five minutes into a board game. Maybe they're five years old. Maybe they're eight years yeah. old. We're playing shoots and ladders or something. And how many know that at some point they they roll a bad roll. They get a bad move and they and then they quit. They go all right, I'm done. And then me and my wife would go. No, you don't get to quit just because things didn't go well for you. Come on, Jason. Like there's there's things that we just have to understand. Like I don't want to raise a quitter when things aren't going well. And you think, is that really what? Yeah, that's really what I'm going to teach them right now. Right. They pitch a fit. They might even cry, but we're not. We, you're going to finish this we, game. Because Andersons are not quitters. Because Andersons are not quitters. There, there's all these opportunities always around us finishing a puzzle. Um, staying focused on something a long period, period of time because, you know, there's there's ADHD out there. It's, it's it's contagious almost. Like it's you know, kids are having a hard time focusing for a long period of time. But you can you can train your children. It's how to a focus. muscle. It's a muscle that you train. But it takes work, and 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 I can tell you this: the parenting is a lot easier without that work. In the beginning. Yes. Right. In see, the beginning. see, this is what parents. You're going to put in the work. 
right? You can put the work in early or you put the work in because you got to drive teenagers. down to the schools as a teenager. You have to go down and yeah, you, you're now. up at, uh, late at night trying to figure out where they're at. Like they're, they're not listening. You're, you put in the work. And if you put the work in, now this is what I like, train up a child the way they should go. So, so what happens is you're teaching them at a young age not to quit. They cannot depart from it. So now they become adults. And they I just, can't quit. They can't quit. So Savvy right I now. I don't know why I can't quit, Savvy's I can't a, quit. Savvy. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 wah, 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 like, like Snoopy, like the Charlie Brown episodes where the teachers are, wah, 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 wah. Oh, man, I could go for another cup of coffee. I, w I wonder, I wonder if I can mentally interrupt him just with my mind. Stop talking. Stop talking. Was that my stomach? Man, I'm hungry. What was that part on Monty Python's Holy Grail where they all got hungry and uh, I think they ate Lancelot's goose? Because you you're going to gonna have a job friendly. one day when everybody, the co-workers, aren't exactly great. Mm -hmm. So you learn how to love and how to be kind from this, right? This is consistent. Mm -hmm. Apply it to your home, to your family, and I'm telling you what, it makes such a difference in your life. Don't forget to partner with us. Yes. If you're blessed in this, which I know you are, um, it allows us really to get the, the word out there. Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for this... Uh, this word today, and, and, and Lord, that we might take this to heart, and that we might live it, Father God, <clears throat> and that your hand is, up, is upon us today, that your, your favor is on us, that you, you go with us wherever we go, and we walk with courage today, and we walk with integrity, and, and we follow your word as best as possible. Lord, give us the strength to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. 100% accurate. They were wrong that it was wrong. Because here's what I can tell you for sure. The God who created the heavens and the earth, who's my father, who set planets into orbit and figured out the math to how to make that work, who created gravity, who created atoms that aren't flung apart but somehow are held together by a strong nuclear force, who created every cell in the human body and the cell in plants, the plants that would, would breathe oxygen and we would and, 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 and it would expel oxygen, which we breathe in, and, and we expelled carbon dioxide, which they breathe in, and, and that everything is in perfect balance in a finely tuned universe who thought of everything and holds it all together by his most powerful word. That God has no problem keeping his word accurate and reliable. As David said in Psalm chapter 119, thy word is righteous and holy. It is true. Come on, somebody. It is true. We found out that God must have been holding it together. Through all people who are full of human error, God held it together. What I want to ask now is, would, if you had lived in the 1800s, would you have believed the lie and lived an entire life without the power of the Word of God working for you because you were lied to? Because the truth is, the same lie is still going out today. The problem with the lie that they have is actually doesn't have any merit, but they say it so much, and there's so many lies about the Word of God. Like Joe Rogan, who's got the biggest podcast in the world. Joe, I love you, man. But listen, when it comes to being a Bible scholar, you, you're, you're, that's not what, and he never claimed to be a Bible scholar. But he says multiple times, the Bible's been through too many translations and too many translators to be accurate, and people buy that. Listen, the Bible hasn't been through too many translations. It goes from Greek and Hebrew, and then the, all, the, all of the translations that are popular today went back to, had scholars, Greek and Hebrew scholars, go back to the source of Greek and Hebrew and translate it just one time into your language. So when you say it had too many translators what, that, and translations, no, it doesn't. It, it's not like they took from the source document, made one in French, and then took the French version and made it in Italian, and then took the Italian version and made it into Spanish, and then took the Spanish version and finally gave it to you in English. No, no, it goes back to the source there's one move, and you're talking about some really smart people. Every single translation, by, I love them all. I love all translations. I read them all, and I find which one I love the most. You'll see people say, which translation do you use? You'll see on the scripture, when I preach from you, I've gone through and read. I read in Greek and Hebrew. I read and write in both Greek and Hebrew. And I'll go through and find the one that I feel like is most accurate, and I'll read that one. I, I bounce around. And it's, it's wonderful what we have. I used to have bo bo stacks of books. Pastor Scott will tell you this too, and, and Dr. Tom. Stacks of books that I used to have to go through to source out and research the scripture that I'm teaching on. But now the reality is I can do it all on my phone. We all have access to all of the Hebrew and the Greek and the translations and everything at our fingertips. Somebody say amen. And it's accurate. 
and it's true. Don't forget to be in church this weekend, wherever your church is. What does church do for you? It, it builds you up, energizes you, gets you ready, but it also knits you in. You form great relationships. And it's, and it's great. It's a place life. you can build your house on the rock.